Bushcraft 412 and today we're doing a review on the Frost Cutlery Combat Fighter Knife. Uh, this knife is available on quite a few websites. Um, I believe I got mine through the Bug K catalog for $9.99. Uh, they range in price from $9.99 up to, I've seen them being sold for in the $20 range. Um, this one is basically a K-Bar knockoff and we will get this out of the way quick. As you can see, there's the knife. Um, comes with a leather sheath. Um, cheap leather stitched with a little sharpening stone pocket in the front. Uh, snap buckle, which already has uh, almost ripped on me, as you can see. But it is an inexpensive knife, so I don't expect a ton out of the sheath. So let's get that out of the way. And this out of the way. And we're going to try... A, we've been trying a new background today because I found that these... Uh, the black coated knives do not show up the greatest on the other background, so I was hoping this color blanket here would uh, bring out the knives a little better and bring up the image quality. Um, as you can see, this is a uh, K-Bar ripoff, basically. It is the same length. Uh, it's a 7-inch blade, about 13 inches overall. Leather washer stacked handle. As you can see, full tang. It goes all the way to the pommel with a stainless steel pommel that is pinned on. So the construction is virtually identical to that of the K-Bar, at least with the handle. Uh, stainless steel finger guard, very tight. Everything with the handle is very well put together. Nothing's loose or anything along those lines. The blade is a uh, black uh, powder coat. No problems with the finish at all. Very clean finish. Fuller. Uh, very similar to the style that the uh, K-Bar would have. Uh, USMC engraving near the finger guard. It seems like it would be the other way around. It kind of seems upside down when you're holding it, but, you know, it is an inexpensive knife. And this one on here has it, uh, says, uh, basically stainless uh, steel handcrafted in China. The number on it says uh, BK1794. I don't know if you'll be able to read that. Uh, this knife is essentially a stainless steel copy of the K-Bar. The K-Bars, of course, use a high carbon steel. And if you're new to the world of steels, high carbon steel is a tougher steel that gets harder. Um, which you would think, well, geez, why doesn't everyone use high carbon steel? High carbon steel is uh, very uh, easily able to be corroded and rust. Uh, so you do have to take a lot better care of a carbon steel blade than you do stainless. Stainless steel, on the other hand, has uh, metals in it that basically pre which prevent it from rusting. It's not uh, rust-proof in any way, shape, or form, but they are much more resistant to rust than carbon steel. Uh, however, the stainless steels typically, unless they're very well heat-treated, do not get as hard as a carbon steel. So typically, your your rule of thumb is that Stainless steel will lose their edge quicker, but they also sharpen up easier. Versus carbon steel, which tend to hold the edge longer, but are harder to sharpen. Now, that's just kind of a general rule of thumb. It's not, you know, the case all steels are different. But it's kind of just a general rule of thumb you can go by when you're looking at knives. Uh, so this is a stainless steel copy of the K-Bar. Uh, blade geometry is pretty close to identical. The bevels are close enough for my purpose. The uh, clip point edge is not sharpened on the back here, which it is for most K-bars. Uh, so you only have the one edge. Blade thickness is actually very impressive for a budget knife, a $9.99 knife. Very impressive with that. The blade is straight uh, within the handle. There's no... I can't find any flaws with the handle or the blade, the finish, or fit, or anything. And uh, thickness of the blade is actually very good. You know, this blade has no bend to it. Uh, a lot of these inexpensive knives have a, a little bit of bend and flex when you uh, pull on the blade. This one does not. It's actually uh, a very nice quality when it comes to that. Um, the fuller, of course, you know, people call it a blood groove, but the fuller's design is not, has nothing to do with blood. It's actually designed to make the steel stronger. Um, the best comparison I can give you is like when you eat a, sli a slice of uh, New York style pizza and you fold it in half, 
you know, because if you pick it up flat, you know, it just droops over and bends. But if you bend it in half, it gives it strength and you can pick it up and eat it. I know it's a bad example, but that's the best way to explain how a fuller works. It basically, you know, creates strength in that fold. Uh, let's talk about sharpness out of the box. This knife is actually very sharp for being a frost cutlery. Uh, frost cutlery is universally put down in the knife world as uh, being a cheap, inexpensive manufacturer um, that makes Chinese-made uh, materials. And they are not to be confused with uh, Frost Mora. Completely different companies. So I know the comments are probably going to come in about that, you know, for the people who tune out by this point in the video, but Frost cu Cutlery is not the same as Frost of Frost Mora of, uh, you know, Scandinavia. So Frost Cutlery makes very similar in quality to m -Tech. Uh, probably the stuff is made out of the same factories, same areas, you know, most likely same factories. Um, so, of course, what they typically make are stainless steel budget knives, and this is one of them. Now, here's the thing about this one is I think this one is actually good enough quality. This is really a, uh, a diamond in the rough right here. This is actually a very functional knife. I would have zero problems taking this out in the woods and using this for wilderness survival. The quality on this for $10 is an absolute steal. Um, I've got some $20 and $25 knives that I do not, I'm not as confident as this knife. It's actually, I'm very, very impressed with the, uh, with the quality on this. I was expecting, you know, I was worried it might not be a full tang because a lot of these knives, they don't mention what they are. And, you know, when I got it and I was able to see, yes, this is a full tang. You know, yes, it is a, a, you know, a stainless steel pommel and finger guard that they weren't, you know, aluminum or anything like that that might not be as strong. It really impressed me. And then just to feel the blade, you know, feel it in your hand and try and flex it and see how strong it is. Um, this is definitely a knife. If you are into bushcraft, this is a knife you could baton with, you could pry with. You could probably do everything a K-Bar does. The only difference is this is not a K-Bar. It's not at that level of quality. A K-Bar you could probably treat like that for life and it will probably be fine. This knife, you can treat it like a K-Bar. It just may not last you a lifetime. Um, I don't foresee the blade ever breaking on this uh, because it is thick and the thickness runs almost straight down to the end. Um, the, it's full thickness all the way down to the clip point. Uh, which is very nice. And you can see that bevel, the actual full thickness goes almost to the very, very end. So this is going to have a very strong tip. Um, you, just, you know, this I think this compared to a K-Bar is, you're going to have to sharpen this up more often than a K-Bar, of course, because it is stainless steel. But on the other hand, you don't have to worry so much about corrosion. So it is kind of a nice little benefit. But I think this is a good poor man substitute. If you don't have the 45 50 you know, even... $60 for a K-Bar, this is a good substitute that will do pretty much everything the K-Bar does. It just, you know, it may not last you a lifetime. You know, I can't say that for certain because I haven't put this thing through extreme testing, but just based on the initial quality and feel, you know, this is the same construction, same handle construction as a K-Bar. You know, and if it works for K-Bar, it's going to work for this. You know, the blade geometry is almost identical. If that works for K-Bar, it's going to work for this. The only difference between this and the K-Bar is the steel. So I think, you know, if you can live with the fact that it's stainless steel, you can live with this knife. And I have no problem, as you've seen on a lot of my other videos, I have absolutely zero problems with stainless steel. I don't put it down like a lot of people do. And I know this is, you know, Chinese stainless steel, so, you know, this is, who knows what's going to be in this and what qualities it's going to have. And it may be, you know, there's that possibility it could be poorly heat treated. But, you know, I'm willing to take that risk from the initial feel and test I did with cutting just like cardboard and paper. I'm very excited that this is going to be a great $10 uh, poor man's K-Bar. So... If you see one for 10 bucks, I definitely think this is worth it. I think this is a knife that's worth $20. You know, maybe even 25 if you ask me. So I think this is a definite value leader in its category. And uh, underpriced for uh, the quality. I'm very, very surprised at how nice this knife is and 
very glad I picked it up. Uh, Bushcraft 412, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, this again is one of another one of our uh, budget knives that are uh, that I'm doing this uh, this late series of uh, budget knives. <laughs> All right, a little tongue tied here, so I'm out.